Political Buzz right here on WBBZ. Our time Sunday morning at 11 a.m., Thursday at 9 a.m. And remember to go to our website, WBBZ.tv, and we're going to put uh, some posts up there with uh, some of our other shows with Carl and Steve so that you can stay informed. And uh, the last time we met, gentlemen, we talked about uh, what I defined as fury in the falls. And, uh, but that's been resolved now. The Hamster Project is going to move forward. And, uh, Steve, it looks like there's little, been a little bit of political fallout there with Sam Frischone, the councilman, kind of being voted out. But the Falls Project, it looks like, is going to move forward. Well, I, I do think it is. And I think what was important is, is that um, I think it shows the attention that the governor is paying to Western New York. And uh, he got involved. His office got involved. Uh, trying to work out uh, some of the concerns, particularly of what Councilman Bob Anderson, um, who was trying to play a constructive role, not just a, a, a role to be a, against something just for the sake of being against it. And I think he was able to have his concerns addressed uh, to make sure that um, that uh, the, the city, if the project didn't work, wouldn't be uh, on the hook for uh, um, uh, a default to make sure that uh, somebody couldn't just use the project to try to, you know, do a, a middleman wholesale flip um, as far as the price of the land. And I think they've worked out something with the governor's intervention uh, that allow that project uh, to get started. Uh, so I think it was a positive thing. Um, and there's oftentimes there's disagreements in government. And I think the important thing is that more, you know, thoughtful minds were able to come together and try to at least get something forward to show that there's going to be attention on trying to br bring Niagara Falls, which really deserves uh, to be uh, the attraction, uh, not what's there right now, which is just uh, where you have Canada, you know, the shining city on the hill, uh, and with nothing to do on the other side. And I know Carl knows a lot about this as a well, you know, as a developer Carl has a property in the up city there, the, the Giacomo, and we talked about that the last time too. That uh, it's doing pretty good, and you know, this is another is a competitor. But yeah, I, I, there's not many people like you, Carl, who are stepping up. I to think do we're something. watching the evolution of the what was a very incestuous community years ago where where developers like Benderson came in and said I want to I want to build a, this this mall right in the downtown area and and he had problems from day one everybody had their hand out the unions wanted to impose all their rules on them uh, the government wanted to impose it. now I think what you're seeing in government is they're getting back to what government should be about and that is to serve the people to encourage development, to encourage expansion at a tax base. Uh, uh, I, I found when we built the Giacomo that, that I could deal with all the unions except the carpenters. The carpenters didn't want to uh, be fair and reasonable and give us, give us an opportunity. So uh, we told them uh, they're out. Okay, well, the laborers had to join them, even though the laborers were going to be incom accommodating and, and the laborers union had a good attitude. But the carpenters wanted to be ornery. So they picketed us for a couple of weeks. I had some state police watching, and, and, and then they were gone. Uh, but uh, my biggest problem at the time was the Shippo office in, in uh, uh, Albany, uh, trying to dictate requirements to us. That held us up for a couple of years. And time is money. Time is, is, is headaches. And, and there isn't money, and, a lot of and, money coming no, into Niagara and, Falls. And when you're the second poorest area in the country, uh, you've got you to look at it and say, hey, it's difficult enough. We don't need you people coming in and trying to micromanage us and tell me I have to replace, or I, excuse me, I have to fix 546 old broken, broken down uh, window, sa window sashes, okay, uh, rather than just replace them. And I mean, triple my cost. That's the kind of nonsense that I had to deal with. They wanted to go up and make sure that our guys using electric tools to to repoint the building uh, uh, had an observer. I had, I didn't pay for it, but they they paid. The state paid to have an architect stand up on the scaffold on that big 25-story building. All right, and watch each man with his electric tool because they didn't trust him. It, nonsense. For the, but for the I think for that's the what we're trying to move away from, and I, I think I, the governor's but Mayor determined. Deister, uh, I found, and his predecessor, Mayor Ayel, uh, they they were very very cooperative right. from City right. Hall. We had the best relationship with them. Uh, uh, I don't know really what incited all this this pushback on Hamster. I think as a developer, we welcome more developers to to build because as synergy just builds up. I think there was some misunderstanding and miscommunication. Do you think? And then a lot of people were becoming entrenched in their positions. And I, and I actually to think that that a governor would come in and, and get involved at, at that level to make sure that a project moved forward. And he has said 
that Niagara Falls is a jewel, and we need, we, need, we need to bring it back, and we need to be able to compete with that Canadian side. And we have 14 million people going through there. We need to keep them there, do you not think it, just to go through for a few minutes. Do you think it cost Sam Frischone his job? Well, I, I'm not so sure that it was just the one thing. If you look at there's been a lot of fighting uh, on that council. And I think uh, he and the, the, the problem he everything. had. Well, I think it really had to do with you know with that fight with the NIAC and with the the problems where the the, the not for profit wanted to come in and give money and they didn't want to accept the money even though it was coming out of a of a charitable trust and and I think it was a pr problem I think of miscommunica miscommunication and at times when people come entrenched in their positions, uh, they end up uh, sometimes getting so much into the forest that they can't see the trees and I think that. That might have happened, and there was a lot of campaign uh, things that you, that you can't control. Sam did uh, do a very good job, and I think he should have been reelected. I'm sorry he wasn't. Uh, he, he had a very successful uh, eight years on the council, um, and I think you know has, it will leave there with a lot of accomplishments. And unfortunately, that thing got caught up in the press, and there was a lot of sensationalism out of Channel 2, which was actually, I think, done unfair. You know that, that Channel 2 tends to, to do that with you sometimes, Carl. But, um, the, the opinions so expressed I, I to those, to of the, <laughs> those are the guests. Yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, I think that what happened is, is a little miscommunication, sensational in the press, some, some campaign literature that was probably unfair to him. Uh, I don't think it was just one project. Let's talk a little bit about Atlantic City, because Atlantic City has a casino, Niagara Falls has a casino, and uh, just as we end... You think we'll the end, lesson would have been learned. Well... Okay. You think that the Atlantic City model would have taught somebody something. I mean, they did it in New Orleans. They witnessed Atlantic City, the problems of giving them their, their all-contained little bubble. And in New Orleans, they wouldn't allow them to have a hotel. They wouldn't allow them to have restaurants. Right, they right wouldn't the the allow them to have a franchise to do anything but gambling. And what did that do? It helped all the surrounding properties, okay, develop. Yeah. And, and it became a shared experience rather than just the Senecas in this case, having 50 acres of land and, and a position right in the center of the city of Niagara Falls only there, okay, to suck all the money they can out well, of that area. One of the area. things the Senecas are talking about doing now in this renegotiation we have that, about they, 30 seconds. that they did of their compact is they're talking about doing ancillary development with other developers outside of, of the area. They seem to be that they also understand that the area around the casino off-reservation off property right. needs to be developed, and they've That's, made a commitment to, to, yeah. to, to make some economic And there's well, one other point about... Quickly, uh, Carl, and I want to get a picture in Milstein's here. Milstein's group is a predator. Okay, right. Milstein's group has uh, has been a predator. They have 144 acres of land right in the center of Niagara Falls, and they're middlers. They're not. They're waiting for somebody to come in so they can extract money out of them. That's all that. So we'll about. have more on Niagara Falls in other episodes. The reason I bring up Atlantic City is because we have a picture here of Nina Davalori of Syracuse, and uh, she was the winner of the uh, Miss America pageant. She's of Indian descent from uh, just downstate a little bit uh, from here. And uh, a lot of the uh, social media were saying, hey, you know, why was she voted uh, Miss America? And it kind of reminded me of what had happened in 1984 when Vanessa Williams was voted Miss America. A lot of uh, folks were uh, unfortunately hating back then. So unfortunately, that history has repeated itself. But we wish Nina and everybody in Syracuse A Syracuse girl, that's yeah. great. All right, gentlemen, we'll see you next time on Political Buzz here on WBBZ. Thank you Thanks for watching so. here on your hometown television station.